correct level. Uh, an eight foot air motor takes two quarts of oil, no more. Put too much oil in it, runs out. And uh, I use 10 weight non detergent in all windmills. You don't want to put heavy oil in them because it plugs up oil passages. Um, I look and see if there's external places where there are grease jerks or something to grease them. Sir? How often is the oil machine? Uh, Air Motor recommends if, that you change oil once a year in their windmills. And uh, if you're using them constantly, that's an excellent rule of thumb. If you only turn them on uh, once in a while to watch them go around, and then uh, every couple, three years, is doing pretty good. Um, when I started fixing windmills back in 1981, I used to be able to go out and find a windmill, buy it, take it down, haul it somewhere, and put it up again with very little work on it. Any, you know, it's been uh, 28 years since then, and all the windmills I find have 28 more years of wear and tear on them. And anymore, I figure they all need bearings. They all need the brake rebuild. Rarely I find one that uh, doesn't uh, meet that rule of thumb. But, uh, much. That's, uh, but of course, if I'm selling something, I sell it in a reconditioned mill. So I want all that stuff fixed and working right before I put it up. Uh, let's see. We've got some pictures of. Yeah, I'm ignoring this slide. So. Okay. Here I am uh, laying a windmill down. When I take them down, I take the windmill down. Uh, sometimes the towers are designed in such a way that it's relatively straightforward to just start at the top, disassemble parts, uh, take a motor off with a gin pole, and then disassemble the tower, the tower one leg, one third at a time, while you're standing on planks on the tower and work your way down. But a lot of towers are not built that way, so you have to lay them down. And here we're laying down this tower for a guy. I, again, I wish you could see these slides better, but uh, I've attached hinges to the, I have some homemade hinges that I've attached to two legs. So those two legs can lay down. And I've got a, a cable attached up near the top of the tower. In this particular, usually I would have a tractor or a truck, or a, now I use a big 6,000-pound uh, winch on my truck. Usually I'd have a, a tractor or a truck out here to lay it down. In this particular case, there was a bunch of trees there, so we couldn't put the tractor there, so we ran the cable through a pulley and had the tractor off to the side. Uh, there's the guy on the tractor. And again, you can't see it very well, but if you, you just tie a cable on or a rope on a tower and start laying it down. It'll lay down pretty nice until it gets about to here, and then it'll bam. And I don't want it to do that, so I use a gin pole. And there's different kinds of gin poles, but what I use is an A-frame. The one I have now is made out of uh, two pieces of inch and a quarter pipe, or inch and a quarter square tubing that are 20 feet long, and they're bolted together near one end, so there's a little crotch at the top, and I spread that apart and butt that up against two legs of the tower, and then I have a, uh, a come-along that's fastening it to the tower, so as the tower lays down, that gin pole stands up. Then you have to make sure that the cable that you're laying it down with comes down in the crotch of the gin pole. And then that tower will lay down just nice and slow and easy. And uh, no surprises. No. That's a picture from the end showing you this gin pole. This is an early version of it that was made out of wood. And then the cable ran up over that crotch. And that's the uh, happy owner that after the tower came down nice and easy. And we. 
see it very well, but we put a cobbled a set of wheels on it, and he was moving into a pasture on the same farm, so we just put it, hooked it behind a tractor and towed the whole tower out to the uh, uh, pasture where he and we put the footage in and stood it up. This is a this is some slides of my sons and I uh, several years ago when I had some husky boys at home, still at home to help me, and we're putting up a tower from the ground up here. So you are, as you put it together, it makes a nice scaffold, and you put some planks on the scaffold, and then you can stand on the scaffold uh, and just uh, bolt the pieces together you know, like a giant erector set and uh, work your way up. Then I have, we're putting the tower together there, putting the wooden platform on the top. Then I have a gin pole that I mount up there. My, there's lots of ways to make a gin pole, but my gin pole is made out of two inch pipe and it's about 13 feet long. It fastens securely to the tower in two places and then it has a small uh, winch that is mounted, hand crank winch. It's mounted right on the gin pole. And I can lift this, this weighs about 220 pounds. This is the gearbox for a 10 foot air motor windmill. I'm cranking that handle at the top come on, to lift that gearbox up and uh, set it on. Then I use the same technology to hang the tail and I take the tail down and put the wheel up one, set, one section at a time and hoist it up with a rope. Assemble the wheel piece by piece. That's a close up of one of my hinges. That's a homemade hinge that a guy I put a tower, I put a window up for, made that hinge to put on his tower.